So I have a lot of questions to you. The first question is, could you please share us the latest update of the COVID-19 outbreak in Singapore? And uh, what kind of experience do you have so far in treating COVID-19? I'm eager to learn from your experience. The second question is the patient with multiple times of the relapse into positivity. How do you treat this patient in Singapore? Do you have any clinical experience or lab result that you can share with us? The third question is that how do you view the future of the COVID-19 outbreak? The fourth question is that do you think the um, pet in our house can be um, can spreading or shed the, shed the virus to other people? Thank you. Thank you very much for for your question, I'm, I'm going to give you the answer about the situations of COVID-19 in Singapore. In Singapore, we have categorized the patient into the following different categories. The first part of the category is about the high-risk populations, the immigrated workers, or the um, people who are coming for to Singapore as an international guest. We put them in under quarantine. The second part of the uh, population is about the mild patient. They are under medical observations in quarantined hotel. The third part of this uh, medical population is about the severe and critical patient. And I think uh, we are providing the medical care in hospitals. And uh, for the extremely critical patient, we put them in ICUs. Currently, we have around 20 cases in ICU. The um, Another category I want to mention is about the patient in the rehabilitation period. We have used private hospitals or hospitals in the community to uh, house all of these uh, patients in the recovery stage. The second question is about the uh, relapse of the positivity for several different times. In Singapore, currently, we have not encountered a single clinical case about these kind of symptoms. But as a virologist, I guess it might be because of the uh, balance between the immunity and attack of the virus. So one solution I have come up so far is to break the balance between the virus and the immunity system. Currently, I think it's because of the immunity system cannot cut into the virus. So my solution would be that either we enhance the immunity system or we have weakened the immunity system to fully expo expose the uh, battle between the virus and the immunity system. So the third question is about the futures of the COVID-19. Uh, are we going to live with this uh, COVID-19 virus forever? But currently from the China and uh, DPR case result, uh, our case result, we find the patient, uh, we find the two countries have controlled the patient in a quite good situation. But uh, we are also seeing the sporadic cases happening in China and in South Korea. I think it might be because of the three different reasons. The first one is the imported cases from other different countries. The second reason is because of the asymptomatic um, cases. And the third reason is because of the pet or other different animals has transferred the virus to the human. If we cannot control these three different infectious uh, sources, we cannot uh, eradicate the virus from the human population. Uh, I think the fourth question is about the infectious uh, from the from the animals, according to different news reports, we find that uh, the cat, the tigers um, in New York and also in Hong Kong, um, the dogs have the uh, coronavirus and have the COVID-19. But the question is whether these kind of animals can transmit the virus to human beings. But for a household cat pet, we should avoid uh, nose to nose contact um, we should also avoid any um, close contact with the re uh, respiratory systems. And uh, if we have, uh, if we designed, if we want to have a very close monitoring of the animals, that is a very high cost to all the human beings. So I think in China, you have a very small number of the asymptomatic patient. Maybe we can start from the asymptomatic patient in China to check whether any of these patients is being uh, is get infected from the animals. So that is a very good research orientation. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.